everyone it's Renee with Delaney Jane cars welcome back to my channel today we're going to build a dimensional scene using some of the new products from the not too shabby shop Jamie at the not too shabby shop has a rewards program she also offers a discount on almost everything in her shop and 2 s 10 will get you 10% off but we're going to talk about the new release this is picnic fun here is tea time buddies and um, all the characters are drawn very similar and um, if you've watched any of the other videos, you know that I'm going to say all the same things. They're super cute. They mix and match, and um, there's some really adorable sentiments and images here. I think they would be great for kids' cards for sure, um, but I will leave a link below to um, the stamp set that we're going to be using today, as well as the entire release. You can get a I Want It All bundle, and she offers a discount on it. And if you've been following me at all this month, which is the month of March, you know that it is my watercolor experiment month. I'm really trying to better my watercoloring, and I'm currently practicing with some General's Kimberly watercolor pencils. So I'm going to show you a little bit of the coloring that I did with this um, set here. I have found that if I use a really light hand when I apply the color, I get much better results. So I'm showing you here on one of my new camera angles um, how lightly I am coloring. Now I do have the coloring sped up to four times because otherwise we'd be here all day. I'm not sure if you're like me. I would watch somebody color all day. I find it super soothing, almost like coloring itself, um, but I'm sure not everybody is like that. So um, I'm just putting down really light layers of this pencil. Uh, what these color pencils are is basically pan watercolors inside a wooden stick. <laughs> so instead of taking your paintbrush to the paint, you are putting the paint on the paper and then moving it with the paintbrush. Uh, so what I'm doing here is just lightly coloring in a really light hand, kind of like I'm using colored pencils. The watercolor paper has um, a texture to it, so it will grab the paint out of the pencil and um, help apply it to the paper. And I never had a good result with these pencils ever, but it was because I was using too heavy of a hand. If I left any kind of pencil marks when I was coloring, I wasn't going to move them and still I'm not going to move them. So you need to make sure, or I need to make sure that I don't use a very heavy hand at all. Um, and so and so, well, that was a lot of transitions, huh? <laughs> what I did here with my little panda is I colored him completely in his body, his face, everything. And then I started with the face and I did add a little bit of color to his face. Even though his face would be white, I just didn't want to leave him stark white. So I shaded him with a little bit of tan and a little bit of brown. And then I'm just blending out this color that I laid down when I colored him. And you see how nice and black that color is and how well that really moves. And I'm not using a super wet brush. It's just a damp brush, just enough to blend the color. That also could have been my problem before. I probably was going to the paper with too much water and using too heavy of a hand. And this is going to be an entire learning process for the month of March. I do have a couple other watercolor um, I guess medium? No, watercolor is the medium. A couple other watercolor things that I want to practice with this month, so I'm sure you'll see those. So I just added a little bit of pink to his ears, and I watered it down pretty good. I didn't want him to have pink ears. And then for the picnic basket, I really want it to be kind of a tan color, um, but I only have 12 of these pencils, so I need to mix my colors in order to get what I want and normally if you're using pan watercolors you would mix them on a palette. Well here you mix them right on the paper. <laughs> so I laid down that really light kind of tan beige color and then I just deepened it up just a little bit with some brown. And for the chicken I am not going to show you all the coloring for the chicken. I'm going to show you some. So I filled in his, like right around the outside of him with this yellow pencil. And then I brought in the orange and I wanted the orange around the edges to deepen him up because he's a round critter and the center of him would be lighter. So I brought in the orange and kind of tucked it in there by his cheeks where they would be round and puffy and cute because you know chicks have them cartoon chicks have them really cute puffy cheeks. And then I brought in some brown to even deep 
darken the um, the darkest areas. It's not going to stay brown, but it's going to make the color there darker. And when I applied the water, I started by applying just water to the area where I don't have any color and um, getting the paper wet. And then I pulled the color from the outside edges and kind of blended it and then brought it into the area that I didn't have color. That leaves a nice highlight in the middle. At least that's what I think it does. You tell me, is that how you're supposed to watercolor? Because this is all new to me. This is a practice month. I'm hoping to get much better at my watercoloring in general, not just these pencils. But I did use these pencils for this entire release, which I thought was a super fun challenge. And then when I pulled out this release, I pulled out five paper pads and um, decided to stick to those and the same set of dies. I have several dies, but I stuck to the same ones. So I decided to paper piece this chicken's little apron. When I paper piece, I like to shade the pieces. So I used C3 and C0 to shade the pieces, and then I did fussy cut it out. I'm not going to show um, running around the edges with that Tombow um, marker there, but that's just a black Tombow marker. And I did, before I adhered this down, I did run it along the edges just to make sure that I had nice black edges. So for most of my card I'm using the Summertime or Summer Splash by um, Pink and Main and what was the other one called? Summer Party by Echo Park. They coordinate really nice and it has this piece of cloud paper. Are you like this? Do you hoard a certain type of paper. I guess I don't hoard them. I just really, really love cloud papers. They just add so much to a scene. And all I have left now is a tiny like one by two inch rectangle from this cloud paper. And I, it's just breaking my heart. I wish somebody would make an entire paper pad with all different kind of cloud scenes. It would be super fun. I would totally, totally buy it. <laughs> Um, but I had to kind of creatively mask the circle here because I really wanted more sky, but that's all the paper I had. So then I had to add the grass and um, I couldn't trim that hole off because then I would really run out of sky. So I thought I would just creatively mask it with a cloud. So here this picket fence die is from Avery L and it's one of my favorite scene builder dies that I have in my collection. Uh, it's got grass borders and um, clouds and all sorts of super fun stuff and I'm really glad it was one of my better investments as far as dies, scene building dies go because I have used it so many times. And then I just adhered this kind of built panel onto a piece of striped pattern paper and you can see here I did paint this table off screen and then I paper pieced the umbrella with that matching striped paper. Uh, when I built the cloud and the grass scene there I did die cut a piece of black just to build it on so that it was the right size. I knew I had cut my striped um, paper so that I had a border and I didn't want to like skew that so I just die cut another one and, and um, built my scene on there. And then I added foam tape to the back of all of my foreground stuff, the table, the chicken, the bear, and two of the clouds, and I adhered one cloud down flat over that hole uh, in the back. And um, I just popped these up with the same foam tape. It's my Amazon foam tape. It's cheap. It's $10 for two rolls, and I, I like it. It seems to last well. Um, and then <laughs> as I stick down this pie here, because you know, there should be a pie on the table. I really noticed how crooked my table is. And I was like, oh no, I stuck everything down. Um, I'm gonna use this cutie pie sentiment. And if I stamp that there, you would really, really, really see how crooked that is. So I carefully, very carefully held my breath and peeled this up and then kind of manipulated the table so it looked a little more straight. Put the pie in the chicken bag <laughs> and then um, pulled out my Misty to stamp my Hey Cutie Pie sentiment and um, I stamped that in onyx black ink and then I adhered this to another piece of pattern paper from the Pink and Main pattern paper pack and you can hear my cat I'm sure <laughs> uh, and then I adhered this to a piece of black cardstock and to frame it off. I just love the three-dimensional scene. I think it adds so much. I could have built this flat. Um, 
I just, I don't know, these images speak like cartoon to me, and I just thought this looked super cartoony like this, and I, it needed the picket fence and the cloud background and the cloud borders. And so I finished my clouds with some clear glitter overlay pen by Spectrum Noir, and I had added some white gel pen details, and here I cut and scored my card base off screen, and then I just um, stamped the inside with this cute little picnic basket with some Ranger Letterit in shadow gray, just something little on the inside. And I adhered this to my card base, and that finishes off my card for today. I would like to know what you think um, of my card. Do you like building scenes like this? Do you mix and match pattern paper like pads? and companies. And have you checked out Jamie's new release? I'll have all the links below and uh, I would encourage you to like and subscribe and hit that bell. YouTube's telling me that I should ask you to hit the bell. <laughs> and as always, I appreciate you stopping by and give cards generously. Bye!